Jim, do you think that the psychological literature in the highest impact journals is scientifically trustworthy? Well, I think we've had a number of provocative examples when what uh, when it was found upon closer look that uh, was originally reported as a strong effect turned out to be at least exaggerated, if not outright false. Exaggerated and false. Could that be due to fraud? Well, I think there are some instances of fraud, but they're relatively rare. I think what is much more common is there's such accepted, flexible rules for reporting studies, for picking outcomes after the study, results of the study already known, for increasing or decreasing numbers of of uh, subjects in a study, that by these kind of manipulations, um, uh, they're sufficient to produce exaggerations of effect. You don't need fraud. But wouldn't this just be due to uh, publication bias, you know, the tendency of editors and reviewers to want positive outcomes and significant findings and to reject those those papers where they say, well, we didn't find it. You know, we didn't give I think fine. certainly that editors and reviewers play a role. If you look at some journals like Psychological Science, you'd think that an experiment never, ever failed to work out. And, um, but I, I, and I think sometimes authors anticipate that they're going to uh, be required to have a positive finding, and they chase significance until they have one. Um, but um, I, think it's, um, I think it can't fall just on the journals or the authors. I think it's the expectations of the field that... Um, that um, single findings are newsworthy. And I think what we need to do is um, suspend judgment about how exciting a study is until it's been replicated. Now the premium is placed on the first person to, um, to find a particular uh, result, and I think it should be placed on the first person to replicate it and, and, or in numerous replications. And that we have the expectations from the existing literature that probably most breakthrough findings have got to prove exaggerated or maybe false. So not replicable. Okay, so so in other words, you're saying that it's it's kind of ridiculous to expect a single study to be conclusive. Absolutely, and I, I think that what science does best is knock down hypotheses. But if you look at the current psychological literature, st um, the null hypothesis. Null hypothesis is almost always proven false, and the investigator's preferred um, uh, 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 effect is, is what's found. Playing devil's advocate for a moment, um, what about the proposition that's been advanced by you know, statistically reasonably sophisticated people? The null hypothesis really is always false. It is, but so often is the investigator's uh, uh, expected result. Right, so in so reality, the null hypothesis always is false, but in fact, the effect might very well lie in the opposite direction. And I think a lot of the phenomena that we study with great confidence, they're a lot um, uh, more unstable and less clear-cut um, than, than we'd assume from the psychological literature. Okay, so what, what can we do? What can we do to reform? I think we should start with a skepticism, and we should enforce the idea that people should declare the hypotheses ahead of time, and when they submit their paper to a journal, they they submit their data also to allow independent uh, uh, restudy and replication. And I think there's a movement afoot to do replication studies, uh, and that's fine, but I'd be comfortable if we only replicate people's results using the existing data set, and I think we'll find that's a lot harder than, than we would expect. Okay, so, so by replicating the results using the existing data sets, you mean reanalyzing them? Exactly. Uh, using alternative analyses? Sure. Uh, maybe resampling techniques so that you... All, all of those things. I think, but even for a start, there are lots of times people use very complicated statistical techniques. They use imputation, they control for covariates, and you never they never get around to reporting their simple results. And I'd be much more comfortable if something done with sophisticated analyses could be replicated as, with the simple effects. If simple statistics uh, produce the same effects, then it's very reassuring. When there's a discrepancy, it's worth looking at why. The problem is when I go and try to examine simple effects, so often I can't find them in the paper, and when I write to the 
um, authors, they, they've lost the data, the dog ate the whatever, or they simply don't produce the data. And I, I got a, I replied the other day that the my university doesn't allow me to share data. I hardly doubt that. I thought APS journals required um, maintaining data and making it available for a period of five years after publication. They do, but when you ask the journals to assist you in retrieving the data, they'll say that's between you and the author. I see. What can, let's say, an intelligent lay consumer of research, uh, or even, say, uh, for, for example, a practicing clinical psychologist who is not all that research savvy, uh, do at present with regard to, with regard to the, the, the current situation? I think we can teach them to adopt certain rules based on the weight of past studies. So that when we find out that there's a new treatment that changes the immune system by breathing or by um, meditation or by cognitive behavior therapy, the chances are all, most past claims of that have not proved to work out. If it's unusual for one treatment um, to be better than another treatment, which has a different rationale, but a credible rationale, uh, provides support to the patient and um, positive expectations, it's unlikely to be anything earth-shatteringly different. And um, to give them some basic Bayesian pro uh, prior probabilities. And also that when um, gurus, psychological gurus, give advice to patients, recognize that often the advice is based on studies and the effect sizes are small, they don't generalize to everybody, and that um, when in doubt, trust their, their own sense of self-efficacy and, and um, autonomy, and be skeptical about people selling them advice and undermining their sense they can run their own life. Okay, so uh, a healthy dose of skepticism, a uh, fair amount of vigilance, and, uh, and not falling for the idea that a single study is going to be conclusive. That's right, and I think we constantly have to remind people to keep them on track because they'd like clarity, they'd like certainty, and I think it's the job of other skeptics to keep finding examples where trust in the psychological literature isn't justified. And maybe at some point we'll reach a balance, and so it becomes more trustworthy, but certainly the current literature is not. Let's hope we get to that balance sometime soon. I hope so too. Thank you. <laughs>